The all-electric hatchback, due for reveal on September 6, has been engineered to maximize range with a slipperier exterior helping the model to be capable of driving for up to 340 miles on each charge. That's more than twice the range of the outgoing car and would cement a leaf at the top of its class in this respect, beating the latest Renault Zoe by about 90 miles. The gains will also come thanks to new battery pack options for the Leaf that will enable Nissan to sell it with a variety of specs, as Tesla does with its models. The largest battery could double the 30 kWh lithium-ion pack found in the highest spec version of the current Leaf. Nissan is aiming to make the Leaf the segment's most autonomous capable model, with ProPilot Park technology its newest system. Using sonars and cameras, the car will be able to park itself in parallel, angled, front or straight back in parking spots, handling throttle, braking and steering input. This park assist system will come as part of the car's propellant tech, which also includes a single-lane semi-autonomous feature. It will be Nissan's most advanced autonomous model on sale. The new car's design appears to be inspired by the Micra, as shown by sightings of development cars, see gallery, with sharper lines on the body and a more aggressively stooped nose. When the future Leaf arrives on roads next year, it will lead Nissan's charge to grow EVs to represent 20% of its sales by 2020. Subaru has announced significant changes to its Levorg wagon lineup, adding a new engine and range topping variant with a famous name. There is now the choice of a 1.6-liter turbo petrol engine, in addition to the existing 2.0-liter four-cylinder turbo already available. The new entry-level engine is offered in GT and GT Premium trims and with a starting price of $35,990, means it now costs $7,250 to get into a new Levorg. The 1.6 is a horizontally opposed four-cylinder boxer which has never been available in Australia previously. It offers 125 kilowatts from 4800 to 5600 rpms and 250 newton meters of torque from 1800 to 4800 rpms, admittedly a fair way short of the 2.0 liters 197 kilowatts per 350 newton meters. As with all levers up to now, it is paired with a continuously variable transmission. The move does make some sense, as Subaru has always claimed the Levor to be as focused on comfortable touring as much as performance. Standard kit includes Subaru's EyeSight Safety Technology Suite, auto headlamps with LED daytime running lights, 6.2-inch infotainment screen, dual-zone climate control, rear USB port leather steering wheel and gear shifter and more. The GT does however miss out on the suspension upgrades doled out the rest of the lineup. Previously the Levorg felt like its suspension was hedging its bets in regards to performance versus comfort. The front was firm, the rear was soft. However the Bilstein front and rear suspension has been tweaked to offer more comfort, but configured for minimal pitching to stay flatter. On top of the suspension upgrades, the GT Premium adds perks such as electric lumbar support, heated front sport seats, leather trim with blue stitching, sat nav on a 7-inch screen and extra safety gear including side view monitor, blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alerts, high beam assist and a front view camera. It's not all good news price wise, however. The GTS may still cost $49,140 but it is now the cheapest variant with the 2.0-liter engine, meaning it will cost you $5,900 more than before to get the WRX source unit. Aside from the bigger engine, the GTS only adds sport mode and black wheel accents above the GT Premium, so buyers will need to really want the power boost to justify the $6,250 extra spend. For those who do indeed want the 2.0-liter, many will likely want to opt for the new flagship Levorg, if only for the name. The STI Sport variant sees the famous performance designation added to the Levorg lineup for the first time, though unlike the WRX STI it doesn't get its own, more powerful engine. What it does get is STI exhaust tips, instrument cluster logo, side sill plates, steering wheel logo, suspension and 18-inch alloy wheels, plus a unique front bumper and grille design, red stitching and the option of the famous WR blue paint job. 
Subaru has sold 493 Leverds so far this year, making it its second lowest seller just ahead of the BRZ sports car. The revised lineup is on sale now. Levorg 1.6 GT, $35,990 Levorg 1.6 GT Premium, $42,890 Levorg 2.0 GTS, $49,140 Levor 2.0 STI Sport, $51,990. We've already tested the newly fall challenged in 2018 Nissan Cash Car and today we're reviewing its tougher, slightly gnarlier big brother, the Nissan X-Trail. The two cars share much of their hardware, wrapped in different couture, the Cash Car mops up the large numbers of families who may be stepping from a hatchback or small family car. While the X-Trail is aimed more at folk who want more space, a smidge more mud pluggery and the ability to carry six passengers. This is an important car for Nissan, it claims the X-Trail is the world's biggest selling SUV with 766,000 sold globally in 2016, largely thanks to its rebadged status as the Nissan Rogue in the US where it finds nearly a third of a million homes a year. It's also the company's flagship crossover, crowning one of the most diverse SUV ranges around, stretching from quirky juke to slick cash car, practical X-Trail to chunky Navara pickup. What's new on the Nissan X-Trail for the 2018 facelift? This is a delicate, modest upgrade, it's fair to say. Nobody will fail to recognize this as an X-Trail in the new, wider grille. Bumpers and headlamp graphics provide only a little extra pizzazz. The front headlamps now included adaptive turning function on top spec Tecna models equipped with LED lights. It's the first time this tech has featured on a Nissan car in Europe. You'll also spot the new 2018 model year Nissan X-Trail by rectangular, not circular, fog lights in the addition of four new colors, including rustic oranges, browns and ruby reds. Oh, and higher spec models get chrome detailing along the flanks. What about the new 2018 Nissan X-Trail interior? In line with the Cash Claws facelift, the X-Trail cabin has been lightly revised, but it's hardly much to write home about. There's the same new flat bottom steering wheel to make getting in and out easier and provide a better view of the dials. It's heated too. Yes, this is headline news on the 18 facelift. So not much has changed, but it remains an unremittingly practical, focused place to sit. Around 40% of Brits order the X-Trail as a seven-seater, and the two pop-up rear seats provide useful school run or get home from pub accommodation to children or adults, if they're prepared to squish a bit. The middle row slides back and forth to juggle space front and rear. Nissan says that nearly two-thirds of customers have outdoorsy hobbies. Bikers and hikers will love the big 565-liter boot, up 15 thanks to new, flatter boot side moldings. And waggle foot to open tailgate functionality is new for 2018, shame it takes an interminable 7 seconds to open. We'd rather DIY. It's all finished in the typically Nissan mass market quality. This is no premium cabin, but it is well screwed together and feels built to last. The interior pictured above is equivalent to the UK's top Tecna trim, accounting for nearly half of all sales here. Cheap Lego-like plastic sit cheek by jowl alongside some smarter, softer touch materials. Of more interest is the new tech offered by the 2018 facelift. The rear seats can now be heated for the first time, though only as a bench, not individually. A new 8-speaker Bose stereo should delight audiophiles and the usual host of electro gizmos is now offered, radar-controlled emergency braking, rear cross alert to warn if you're reversing into traffic and Pro Pilot coming in 2018 will bring some light autonomous self-driving in jams and on highways. How does the new Nissan X-Trail drive? 
considering the X-Trail and Cash Claw share the same engineering hardware dubbed CMF1 since 2014's MK2, they drive in subtly different ways. Nissan has lavished more sound deadening and measures to quell noise, vibration and harshness NVH, on the QQ than the X, and it shows. The X-Trail rides with more bounce and hop, especially on the bigger rims, up to 19 inches in diameter, and there's more engine noise from the 1.6 DCI2. Reflecting a modest extra bit of soft rotor DNA, the X-Trail rides on M and S all seasons tires, where the cash car is shod with summer rubber. All in all, the Japanese-built X-Trail feels a bit more cumbersome than the Sunderland-produced cash car, and that should be no surprise. Its wheelbase is 70 mm longer, its body is taller and the curb weight is heavier. That it's louder too, with more wind and road noise, reflects how Nissan has added more sound deadening to the QQ crossover, with extra Teflon detailing on the door seals, no less, but not here. All are front-wheel drive, unless you spec AWD on either diesel. Traction is strong with all-wheel drive and a slightly higher ride height means you can negotiate rural tracks and grassy fields with sure-footed security. The Nissan X-Trail misses out on some of the extra refinement lavished up on the 2018 model year Nissan Cash Car, and it shows. However, the X remains a sensible proposition if you need seven seats, a big boot and a tough, family-friendly crossover. The Land Rover Discovery Sport drives better and the VW Tiguan rival smashes the quality issue, but the big Nissan fights back with a pleasing honesty. It's big, sensible, practical transport for large broods.